Hi everybody, welcome back to Frazzled Dad's Minis. I'm Jim, Frazzled Dad. And this week I'm going to show you how I made this ginormous, crazy, insane dice tower. This is going to be a bit of a different format. Uh, this is going to be all stills. I didn't shoot live video, but I hope you'll stick with me because there's some really cool stuff about this really fun print. Um, like I said, I got this in a Kickstarter some time ago. I only had a resin printer. Um, right in the instructions on this big tower, it says not appropriate for resin because of warpage and just other things that they made it clear wasn't going to work. So I forgot about it until I got my bamboo P1S printer, I don't know, four months ago, something like that. And then all of a sudden I remembered that I had this great dice tower. So why not play around and see how it worked? Uh, I spent five days with that printer running full time. And uh, yeah, I went through, I don't know, at least a spool and a half of material. And it was totally worth it. This video is a bit different format. I didn't actually shoot video while I was working on this thing, number of reasons, but I've got a lot of photos of very specific things that I want to walk you through. How I approach solving some problems, some things that didn't turn out well, some things that I am really, really happy with. So I hope you'll stick around because there's some cool stuff to chat about. Let's get after it. This had this problem at a number of places on different prints. Um, I don't know exactly what caused this, whether it was orientation. Uh, the bamboo calibrates itself. I'd also run some uh, other calibration, but I was still having this problem. And you can see it's not only on the horns, but also with this other arrow down on some other surfaces. What I used, so I was trying some sanding. The sanding wasn't working all that well. I could have pulled out a Dremel. I ended up not doing that. But what did work well was taking good old sprue goo, you know, mix half Tamiya thin cement with some leftover plastic sprue. It turns into this gloopy, gooey mess that's really good for gap filling as well as um, actually cementing some things together. Anyway... I spread that stuff over the top of these horn areas and some of the other surfaces, and it did a really terrific job. I did a little bit of sanding after that sprue goo gap filling, and I was pretty happy with the final result. One of the next things I had to deal with was gluing the different parts of the base together. Um, the front aspect, the stairway had a nasty seam right in the middle, and I needed to deal with that. I tried some gap filler using Vallejo putty. That didn't work well at all. I didn't use sprue goo. Rather, I used Tamiya epoxy putty with some Tamiya th uh, thin glue. Mix that together and it makes a really good spackle. If you watch Night Shift on YouTube, he uses this a lot for texturing uh, armor on his tanks and some of his other things. But it worked just perfect here to really fill the gap between the two pieces and then allow me to smooth over that. You can still see little tiny pieces, but in general, it did a great job of allowing me to smooth over that gap. These big skulls are obviously a very central, impactful visual hit on this. So this was just kind of some standard glowy work. Um, started off with a base of white ink, and I think I used some titanium white from Monument Pro Krill. Then it was a combination of fluorescent red and pink from Golden. A little bit of translucent red from Pro Krill again, and just futzing around. I'm pretty happy with the effect I got. And if you look, I also hit these a bit with some of Dirty Down's uh, moss. Just a touch. I was just trying to give it a bit of additional texture. You can see some of that as well on the central tower. Uh, Dirty Down products are awesome. The green glowy things were a mix. Uh, were started off with using a white base and then really heavily laying in fluorescent green, um, a bit of fluorescent blue, and some white. Um, 
I was able to do this fairly wet and then almost sort of flow liquids together. I, I put this on heavy. I had the pieces flat so that I didn't have to worry about the paint running out. But it was literally like working in a little pond of paint. Um, and I had to be very careful with how I held them. So again, that none of that stuff ran out. But I was pretty happy with the result I got. Let's talk this ISR on, or my attempt at it. I wish I had done a little bit better job getting the pupil a little more um, symmetrical. I futzed around with it, and finally I made myself just stop uh, because I think I did a pretty good job of it. So I started off in this part laying down a base coat of bold titanium white. Uh, all of this was done with brushwork, no airbrush at all. Once that base of white was laid down, then I started mixing around different uh, reds and oranges and yellows. I used a combination of a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I used all of the, not all, I used transparent red, orange, and yellow from Proacryl, which are wonderful for things like this. I used fluorescent paints from uh, Golden, the red, the orange, and the yellow as well. And it was just mixing around the background of that to get those kind of ambiguous shades in there. Once I got that background down, then I used my new favorite detail brush, which is from Rosemary & Co. And it's the Billy Showell line. Shoal, S-H-O-W-E-L-L. Shoal? Anyway, um, I have three different sized brushes from that line, and they have extraordinary tips. Um, they're a lot of fun to work with. It takes a little getting used to. The tips bend over. Anyway, back to the point at hand. Laid down the pupil. Once I was somewhat happy with that, then I started detailing the orange, you know, lightning energy things. I added in some shades of black. Uh, if you look at pictures from the Lord of the Rings movie, the ISR on, um, it's, it's almost kind of blurry. It's a really cool visual. I did my best to get close to that and then was also proud of myself for stopping futzing and just accepting that I had something that looked pretty dang good that I was happy with. For me, I call that a major victory. Let's talk the nine billion horns and skulls on this thing. There's a bunch of them. I got really burned out painting them. Uh, many thanks to some great pals on the Paint Water Soup Discord. Uh, if you're not a member of that, I encourage you to check it out. It is really high-end uh, competition and display artists there. They do amazing work. And it's just a very wonderful, highly supportive community. Um, that's probably my home base amongst all the various different Discord servers I go on. The folks are kind. I have gotten extraordinary help there in leveling up my skills. But pulling it back to this, um, <laughs> I was just getting a little burned out dealing with all this stuff. And Dennis on the server said, hey, let's get on a voice chat and just shoot the shit. He didn't say that. I did. Anyway, really helped get me over the hump of dealing with all of these. All right, so how did I actually paint them? The horns I used, just a couple different mixes of browns, trying to get a bit of yellow in there. Um, did some dry brushing with a whiter uh, shade, a lighter shade of brown, very uh, a light tan. And then finally put a very dilute mix of the AK... Uh, I think it's a vehicle wash brown. And normally that stuff is way too goopy, but if you dilute the heck out of it, it works really well. And so I slathered that on all of the horns and was pretty happy with how it turned out. The skulls, I've got a long... For me, I've got an old recipe that works really well for horn and bone material. And that's starting out with Citadel... Uh, Xandri dust as a base, then doing some highlighting with um, Pallid Witch Flesh, 
and then finally washing it with uh, Seraphim Sepia Shade. And I'm actually looking at those bottles right now because that's what's worked for me. Anyway, um, that I think did a pretty good job with those skulls and helped get them a different color tone than the rest of all of the bony horn material. A couple of the other details. There's a lot of metal bars and um, rings on some of the small skulls and in the tower. I hit all those with, I think it was AK's bronze, and then I gave them a wash. I used, in some cases, a little bit of null oil. I used that AK um, vehicle wash, the brown, because I just had it in a jar. I generally hit all of those with some of the Dirty Down Verdigris. You don't see it really well, but I was just trying to touch it and see if I could get a couple other little spots of uh of you know texture and and weathering in there um not sure what i think about it but it's such a small piece that it's not the end of the world for the flames i painted all four of them with a base of a bright titanium white then came in with yellow blended in some orange as it got higher up blended in some red as it got higher up from there and then just touched some of the tips with a little bit of black and I tried to do all this fairly wet, even though they're small, so that I could blend a little bit between those different color segments. And I was pretty happy with how that turned out. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed that. I know it was a very different format. Um, there were several things that I didn't cover, like just getting the basic base coat down. I hit the all of the pieces with Rust-Oleum Rattle Can Black. Um, I did some very heavy dry brushing. Don't even know if you can really call it dry brushing, but I scrubbed on a lot of gray paint. Um, I added, diff because it's so big, I didn't want a monotone um, color, so I added on different shades of gray. There are parts that I hit with some of that basic gray with a bit of red mixed in, with some brown, with a bit of yellow. The point was that I was not painting individual bricks on this monster, but there were areas where I just hit with slight color variations. Uh, didn't use the airbrush on any of it. I could have, but this was mostly just dry brush and then a bit of, you know, attention to detail in smaller areas. Again, to give a little bit of variation because it's so freaking big. Um, this was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, please hit the subscribe button if you're not already. That way you'll get notifications when I drop other content. I'm a tiny channel. Every subscribe helps. Give me a thumbs up, please. That would, uh, again, that helps with the algorithm. And if you enjoyed this format, this isn't going to be something I do regularly, but if you found it interesting, let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments, too, if you've worked on large pieces of terrain and how you approached it. But for now, let's have a look. Here's the grand reveal. And that's it. Uh, again, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed this. Again, let me know in the comments what you thought of this format. But until next time, be kind, especially to yourself. Go out, learn, play around. This is supposed to be a fun, enjoyable craft hobby, whatever you call it. Um, experiment around. Try new things. Remember, at the end of the day, it's just paint and plastic. Bye-bye, everybody.